Hey everyone, today I want to talk about a sobering subject, and that is narcissism. Narcissism is prevalent in our society. I have read conflicting views on this. Um, some studies suggest that one in five people could have a personality disorder. Other studies suggest that it's closer to one in 20. Either way, think about it. If you're in a room with 50 people, well, do the math. Two or three or four are probably going to have personality disorders. That means there is probably a suspect in your very own family. Now, we've all heard the word narcissist many times and in a variety of settings. A narcissist is someone that is dripping with entitlement, self-absorption, and conceit. While narcissism does include those traits, it's much more complicated than that. In this video, I'd like to paint a more detailed picture of what narcissism looks like in the real world and how you can protect yourself from these predator personalities. My hope is to present an accurate description of narcissism by exploring five different characteristics of a narcissist. The ugly truth must be exposed because of their ability to obliterate the health of those they're married to, those they parent, and those they are associated with. The term narcissism comes from the Greek mythology tale of Narcissus who fell in love with his own image while gazing into a pool of water. This concept of narcissism was introduced by Sigmund Freud in 1914. The stereotypical narcissist is typically viewed as a conceited, selfish, and obnoxious extrovert who thinks only of themselves. Narcissists are arrogant, they do have an exaggerated sense of self, and an extreme sense of entitlement and a complete disregard for others. They will throw you under the bus if it serves them, even if you're married to them or they're your parent. A normal brain can't wrap itself around this fact, but it is indeed true. Narcissists can be very charming and extravagant. They can shower you with undivided attention and thoughtful gifts in the beginning. Over time, their true character or lack thereof will be revealed. They are disturbed individuals who suffered an injury in childhood that was deeply wounding and this arrested their emotional development. So essentially, they're two-year-olds walking around in adult bodies. The picture I've just painted is more that of an overt narcissist. These individuals wear their narcissism on their sleeve for the whole world to see. They're fairly easy to spot, especially after getting to know them. They can't not show their true colors. Now I want to address another form of narcissism that isn't as readily obvious and takes much longer to recognize and unpack. It's imperative to learn about covert narcissism in order to recognize it and see it for what it is so you can protect yourself. Many victims of this form of narcissism don't realize what's happening to them until they do, which is usually years later when they've reached their breaking point and their health is faltering. That's why it's so important to familiarize yourself with the destructive tactics that covert narcissists commonly use to control those they target, because control and manipulation underlie their personality. Covert narcissism is insidious, and the damage inflicted is gradual and often begins subtly with the aim of slowly unhinging the victim over time and making them doubt their own reality. You can learn to spot these destructive and unhealthy people by understanding the intent behind their motives, which is to control the minds and emotions of others. This sense of control feeds their shallow sense of self, giving them the power they so desperately crave. Underneath 
their confident exterior is really a scared little child that has not developed a sense of self. To better understand narcissism, let's go back to its roots. If you've never heard the term object constancy, you'll find this concept fascinating. It's also called object permanence. But object constancy is a developmental skill that allows a child to view their primary caretakers as trustworthy and reliable, even when that caretaker is out of sight. And the caretaker is primarily the mother in most cases. This skill develops during the toddler years when a child comes to understand that out of sight does not mean mommy's never coming back. When a child lacks object constancy, they lose faith in a safe and secure reality. Object constancy is the belief that the person you love and depend upon will always be there for you. It's a belief in constancy. A fragile sense of self emerges when a child doesn't develop this sense of constancy and safety in their formative years. Individuation and ego formation are aspects of object permanence that are negatively affected when this crucial skill is not developed. If a child has formed a strong bond and connection with their mother or other primary caretaker, they'll have a normal sense of object constancy. They can then view the world as safe and be able to form loving, nurturing relationships. However, if a child grows up with the belief that separation and conflict lead to abandonment and rejection, they'll have an inability to feel normal emotions and form healthy relationships. Interestingly, this is how a lack of object constancy leads to the conflict avoidance so inherent in narcissism. Narcissists are avoidance addicts. So rather than address an issue, say, as in a marriage, which, hello, you're going to need to address conflict, they just run from it. I mean, they're little two-year-olds that run away. Narcissism results when a child doesn't learn this critical developmental skill. And this could be due to unreasonable demands being placed on the child or their needs constantly being invalidated and ignored. At the age of two or three in toddlerhood, children are not capable and lack the maturity to openly resist parental demands. So how do these children cope? They develop coping mechanisms so they don't feel so helpless. These children learn to resist, but they do so subtly and deceptively. And this is how the seeds of narcissism are sown. Narcissism very often stems from a shaky relationship with the mother. So here are the five traits that I want to talk about. Now, there are more, but we don't want this video to be 100 hours long. Narcissists lack empathy. If you've ever tried to make a relationship work with someone who doesn't possess or exhibit empathy, you're in for a nightmare. Relationships, uh, particularly intimate ones, cannot endure when one partner is devoid of empathy. The narcissistic person is there physically, but no one's home emotionally. It's like living in the fun house without the fun or enjoyment. It's almost like narcissists lack a soul. Empathy and compassion are the defining characteristics of emotional intelligence which there is none without empathy. Narcissists are certainly not candidates for marriage because they are incapable of forming intimate bonds and marriage and family life require a high degree of emotional intelligence. Nor does it help matters that narcs turn your valid concerns into criticism that their fragile egos can't handle. Their world revolves completely around them. Their bywords are I, me, and mine. Loving, nurturing relationships require trust, respect, appreciation, and compassion. Narcissists 
do not possess these qualities to a high degree or for the long term. They are much too selfish and self-absorbed to think of anyone but themselves. The lack of empathy is the ultimate game changer for any type of relationship. And like I said before, particularly intimate relationships. Narcissists cannot engage and connect. And they'll never be able to because of their arrested emotional development. Don't fool yourself into thinking you can love them enough to change them and teach them empathy. The truth is you can't. It's not possible. Also, don't think covert narcissists are easy to spot. This form of narcissism may remain undetected for years. And they may be seemingly normal for years. But eventually their mask will fall. Those you live with can't put a name to the stealth and strange behaviors. Their partners and associates know that something is off. They just can't put their finger on it. And then, of course, they can appear normal for a while. And then they do something bizarre. And so, I mean, it's just, it's just a chaotic mind game. A covert narc could be the nice man or woman down the street who everyone loves. These people can appear to be normal unless you're close to them. Realize that covert means hidden and covert. What goes on behind closed doors in the covert's home may be quite a different story than the public persona that they display. It's commonly the intimate and family relationships that suffer from this not-so-obvious form of narcissism, which is just as dangerous as the overt form, and maybe more so because it is covert. Also referred to as closet narcissism or hypersensitive narcissism, these people can dish out cruelty, but when the same behavior is directed at them, they fall apart. Because of their childhood wounds, covert narcs are ultra-sensitive and insecure inside. The suave exterior belies the fragile ego, shallow sense of self, and insecurity that is their true nature. Covert narcissists can be compared to a bomb just waiting to go off. Their calm and collected demeanor does not convey the seething anger that lies just beneath the surface. This anger is not obvious, but is passive-aggressive in nature. Covert narcs are extremely passive-aggressive. And this brings us to our next destructive characteristic of this disturbed personality type. Passive-aggressive manipulation. If you've ever been the target of passive aggression, you know how awful it is. The covert narc makes everything your fault. So you get to be the one that's abused, but then it's your fault. It's like the biggest mind game. Though not as obvious and identifiable, passive aggressive people are every bit as destructive as their aggressive counterparts. Passive aggression is still aggression and a dangerous form of manipulation, dominance, intimidation, and control. When passive aggression is directed at you, you'll feel judged, accused, and defensive while not knowing what your crime was. In this type of aggression, there's a disconnect between what the covert narc says and what he does. They don't appear angry. In fact, they have a stupid grin on, them, on their faces all the time. So while they don't appear angry, they'll use tactics to exact revenge and use whatever tools they have at their disposal to achieve their objective. Narcs are masters of avoidance and adept at sweeping their destructive behaviors under the rug. And they're perfectionists at denial. Because of this need to avoid conflict, they're good at making harmful situations appear innocuous, and they won't validate the severity of a situation that does need to be addressed. This avoidance lets them conveniently off the hook. No need to address a problem if there is no problem. Covert narcissists are uncomfortable using overt aggression to get what they want. So under the guise of pleasing others, 
they'll use their deceitful and subtle tactics to meet their own needs. This leaves everyone baffled and wondering what the heck is happening. Some of their favorite manipulative tools are avoidance, forgetfulness, and procrastination. How convenient to say, oh, I forgot. Narcs have a lack of emotional intelligence. Because narcissists lack the skills to maturely express their feelings of hurt and disappointment like normal, emotionally healthy adults do, they indirectly express their feelings by acting out but in a passive way because they are toddlers, essentially. Suave, smooth, yet seething pretty much sums up a covert narc. But what does passive aggressive behavior look like? Okay, here, here's a scenario for you. A wife innocently does something her covert husband doesn't like. It could be anything large or small. There was no malicious intent on the wife's part, nor does she have any idea what she did. She could have raised her eyebrows the wrong way. She apologizes for her crime, says she'll try harder, and she does indeed try harder because she doesn't want to break her family apart. Who would? The narc says he isn't mad and everything's fine. Life proceeds as normal until, watch out, inside the narcissist is seething and conjuring up ways to make his wife pay for her crime because it, it was a crime. Yes, it would have been easier to discuss the problem openly and deal with it in a mature way. This doesn't happen with narcissism on the scene because the covert lacks the necessary emotional skills to address and overcome conflict. A negative cycle of avoidance and revenge then ensues. It's a cowardly way to live. Number three, a false sense of entitlement. Covert narcs have an extreme sense of entitlement, meaning the rules don't apply to me, but they do to everybody else. The narcissist is special in every way and deserving of treatment and privileges others don't deserve. Their arrogance and grandiosity feeds these unreasonable expectations. Narcissists don't understand give and take like emotionally mature people do. Narcissists are takers. That's how they're wired. What does entitlement look like in real life? Entitlement demands appreciation for even the smallest of favors. When you do something for the narc, however, don't expect thanks or recognition in return. This is a double standard. Remember that. Narcissists don't like talking about other people's interests and ideas. Their dreams and desires are all that matter. Remember, I, me, myself, mine. An inflated sense of admiration for themselves feeds this behavior. If you are married to a narcissistic spouse, don't be surprised when they invite out-of-town friends to stay the weekend without telling you, much less asking your permission. They'll never understand why you would want to know you'll be hosting guests for the next three days. Don't expect them to get how their selfish decision-making could possibly affect you. Either that or it's their passive-aggressive tendencies playing out, or both. When confronted with why they didn't inform you, they will smugly state, and with the stupid grin on their face, say, I forgot. There will be no apology extended, no remorse, and not one iota of concern for your frustration or feelings. They will then act as if nothing happened while you're left angry and confused. Number four, gaslighting and stonewalling. This, this is extra fun. If you haven't experienced the phenomena of gaslighting and stonewalling, you'll be amazed that these damaging tactics even exist. They really are a thing, and that someone can be so heartless and cruel. These behaviors are an extreme form of emotional abuse with the intent of causing the victim to second-guess themselves and question their sanity while slowly degrading their self-esteem. This gives the narcissist their supply, which they so desperately crave. Gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation and mind control. 
Most people are familiar with the 1944 film Gaslight, starring Ingrid Bergman and Charles Boyer. The term gaslighting originated from this movie, and it's basically he he tried to make his wife look nuts. Why would someone want to gaslight or control another person? And supposedly one that they purport to love. That's the best part. Unfortunate but true, most gaslighting behavior is commonly directed at the narcissist's spouse and family members because he would never engage in this behavior at work or with their friends because they value their reputation and their public persona. But narcissists aren't dumb, I guess. They know who and who won't put up with their mentally deranged behavior. They save it for those that depend on them. Narcissists gaslight out of their own distorted sense of self. But of course, the person being gaslighted doesn't know it's not their problem, it's the narcissist's problem. Narcissists also fear being exposed for who they really are. At some point, their narcissistic mask will slip and their true nature will be exposed. The mask, which is their false persona, always slips. It's just a matter of time. This distortion and fear they create in their victims give the covert the ammunition they need to continue their psychological games. The sense of control they derive from these manipulative tactics increases their sense of control and superiority which all narcs crave. This is called the infamous narcissistic supply. If a narc can make you doubt your own perceptions, constantly questioning what you saw and heard, they have succeeded. You have now become more dependent on them because you've lost trust in yourself. How do narcissists cause you to question your own reality? Well, it's the subtlety of gaslighting. First, let me say, gaslighting is extremely subtle in the beginning. So subtle that you may not even notice it. At first, the narc will create mild confusion and anxiety in those they target, which could probably be blamed on other factors. The victim knows something isn't right but can't name it. And this is how the narcissist hooks those they abuse. If you've ever heard the analogy of the frog in the frying pan, you'll better understand this technique. The heat is so gradual that you don't realize you're being burned until you are completely fried. It's not until the abuse has continued for years that the poor unfortunate souls, whose health is now completely obliterated, who are gaslighted, lose their own grasp on reality. It's not until this abuse has continued for years unabated that the poor, unfortunate, gaslighted souls lose their own grasp on reality. Please be aware of how gaslighting is used so you are not victimized. It can come on so subtly. Suspect you are being gaslighted if you are consistently lied to, accused of things you didn't do or say, constantly dismissed, neglected, contradicted, and told that you are crazy. Most importantly, if you start to question your own perceptions and feel destabilized much of the time, there is a good chance you're being gaslighted. Stonewalling is another a narcissistic tactic, and at its most basic level, it's a refusal to validate another person's perceptions, concerns, or feelings. It also involves a total lack of self-awareness and an inability to behave normally and rationally. Those who stonewall never self-reflect or question their own behavior. They have absolutely no self-awareness, and if they do, they don't care. Stonewalling fits in perfectly with a lack of empathy, passive aggression, entitlement, and gaslighting. Stonewalling is a common tactic used by covert narcs to emotionally and psychologically abuse their victims. Essentially, stonewalling is behaving like a bully, a grade school bully. Narcs are bullies to the nth degree. It is deliberately refusing to communicate. Stonewalling is premeditated and intentional. 
Narc Stonewall to control, manipulate, and get their own way. There's also the refusal to negotiate, so trying to divorce them is a nightmare. Narcs would never consider listening and understanding to another person's opinion or point of view, much less appreciate any thought or feeling that opposes their own twisted thought processes. Protecting their own disturbed reality is the narcissist's top priority, and they don't care what hostages are taken in the process. How could they possibly care when they lack empathy? That's why I put a lack of empathy as the top characteristic distinguishing a narcissist. It plays into all the other chilling and unnatural traits. Narcissistic stonewallers will stubbornly stand their ground during an argument. They will not give an inch. They will refuse to negotiate in order to reach a reasonable conclusion that satisfies all parties. This is the thing about narcissists. I mean, they're so ridiculous, they're constantly shooting their own selves in the foot. Narcissists self-destruct. Stonewalling has a lot in common with the silent treatment most of us are familiar with and have even experienced at some point. However, stonewalling has a much more cruel intent, and get this, it can last for years. Can you imagine the emotional and psychological damage that is inflicted by these emotional midgets? If these people are called out on their behavior, though, you'll witness a smug sense of satisfaction and superiority on their cruel faces. There's absolutely no point in trying to communicate or reason with them. Your only course of action should be to protect and remove yourself from any person that ever uses gaslighting and stonewalling to advance their purposes. And this is why education is vital. Number five, a lack of emotional connection. It's impossible for narcs to form loving relationships to nurture, to attach, and to create connection. That would require empathy and self-awareness, which they don't have. Emotional connection is not possible when you're consumed with yourself and you refuse to ever validate anybody else. Arrogance and entitlement don't help matters. Forget all thoughts of having a genuine relationship if you're married to a covert narc or any narcissist for that matter. You'll kill yourself trying to form the intimate bonds that you crave. Narcissists don't have it in them. Nourishing authentic relationships are not possible when dealing with this cluster of symptoms. I would even venture to say that narcissists don't feel, unless of course that's anger and envy. They don't have the range of emotions that neurotypical people do. They usually just feel anger, victimized, you know, they feel like three or four emotions. They are devoid of normal positive emotions like respect, admiration, and concern. And that is why they find the emotions of others so disdainful. They don't feel these emotions themselves, so they can't relate. They have contempt for heartfelt sentiment and emotion. And contempt is one of their key emotions. The overriding emotion a spouse feels who is married to a narc is emptiness. Loneliness comes in at a close second. Trying to communicate with a narcissist is comparable to talking to a brick wall. You'll exhaust yourself trying and you'll receive nothing in return, not even a mere breadcrumb. Don't expect the narc to ever get it. They absolutely will not. This personality type cannot change. Change requires conviction of wrongdoing in order to initiate the process of change. Narcissists have no such conviction of wrongdoing because they are in denial, much less remorse for the harm they have caused. When you can't engage, connection is simply not possible. And this is confounding to healthy people that feel normal emotions. Another quality of narcissism is they will neglect you and withhold affection of any kind. Oh, if you want them to hold your hand, oh no, that would be a federal crime.
if you're in a relationship with one of these two-year-olds, at some point you will come to your senses and try to extricate yourself from your prison. Realize that you are in for the ride of your life. Because narcs don't communicate, it will get ugly. Prepare yourself for this reality. Set ironclad boundaries and practice self-care every single day to shore up your stamina, self-esteem, and sanity. You're going to be your own best ally. The narcissist does not want to live alone in his own distorted reality, so he wants to keep you captive to feed his supply. Self-care is absolutely critical to retrieve the parts of yourself the narcissist has stolen. Work on recovering your self-esteem and self-respect. Reclaim your life by doing things you love every single day and be selfish with your time. Your health needs that. Associate with people that listen to you and value your opinions. Do not settle for anything less. Your fragile sense of self needs nourishment and validation. It will take time to heal, so be patient. And even though it's hard to get away from a narcissist, you must remove yourself from the situation and go no contact. And I know that's hard if you have children with them, but you can always minimize the contact you have with them. Do these characteristics describe someone you know? Have you ever been personally manipulated by a covert narcissist? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching.